and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the red section of our Theros Beyond Death complete set review. Uh, we are halfway there. We've done white, blue, and black. Now we got red, then green, then the multicolor and colorless and artifacts and all that kind of stuff jammed together is our, our largest one at the end. Um, but yeah, let's let's go to red. All right, so this is uh, if you if you haven't seen any of the other sections, I hope you check those out. But we are going through each card and giving them a letter grade for standard and talking about how they're going to be played in standard and just what you can do with each card. We're giving these cards um, a letter grade A through D or an L if it's just for limited. Um, as far as the actual rating, you know, I read through the the rating scale for the other three. I won't continue to do that again. Um, but you know, like you can. If you're here in chat, if you don't have the, uh, you can type exclamation point grade if you want to see the um, the grading scale plus all the ratings we've given the, the first three colors. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can, uh, there's a link to the um, Google document in the description that you can find there. Um, also, as I've kind of mentioned between before all of these, but I, I haven't been able to look at these um previews as much as I have some of the other sets coming in. So I'm a, I'm a little underprepared here. It's been just a really busy uh, month for me. A lot of stuff going on in life. Um, but uh, <clears throat> so that's what, so uh, we got Twitch chat up here that, that are going to help with the review as well. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk magic. Let's talk some cards. All right. So our first card here is going to be the Akron War, three and a red. So four mana for a... Saga that has chapter one gain control of target creature for as long as the Akroan War remains on the battlefield. Chapter two, until your next turn, creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able. And then chapter three, each tapped creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. It's just a really cool card. This is a cool art and everything like that. Um, I like this card quite a bit. Um... Hey, what's up, Magic Harry? Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much there. Um, oh yeah, forgot to forgot to turn the music off. Now that we're back back to it. Um, but yeah, this, this seems like a card that, that's going to play uh, pretty well. Because so yeah, so basically, it's four mana, which is a lot for like red aggro decks. But it should be finishing games out because you know you get to steal any creature um, for your first chapter, and then you know like that means that you're probably going to be able to attack in. Now that creature doesn't get, gain haste. You know, a lot of times when you see, like, Act of Treason effects, you gain control of the creature, and then it gains haste. That one doesn't. So you just take it, but you don't get to attack with it right away. But anyway, so you just take it, then you attack with other stuff, and then they have a turn. And then your next turn, it says, okay, well, now the turn after this, you're you're going to have to attack me with all your creatures. All right. And then you kind of maybe just sit back on defense. And then, all right, so now it goes to their turn. So then they have to attack you. If you have profitable blocks, you can make them. Otherwise, you can just take the damage. And then it goes back to you, your next turn, and then your your tapped creatures. Um, so you know maybe you don't have any creatures tapped anymore, but now they're especially because you just had your own tap step. But then their creatures that attacked that you didn't really want to block, those they will probably be tapped and they will be dealing damage to themselves. Um, a whole lot of stuff going on here. Now it's it's not like it's not going to win the game for you if you're not playing other things. But if you, you know, have a reasonable battlefield and then you play the Akron War, it can finish games out for you, for sure. But yeah, red, red decks do have plenty of things to do with four mana. Um, this has a lot of competition in that respect of a lot of other things to be doing with four mana. But I feel like this, for one single card, this has a really high upside and can do a lot of, um, a lot of different stuff. One thing that's a little awkward that, like, let's say you, you grab their creature, right? You may want to attack with that creature that you just grabbed or and or block something with it there. Because when the third chapter happens, if you didn't attack with it, if you're just kind of holding it on defense, um, you know, each it won't be tapped. So it won't do any damage to itself. And then it does go back to the opponent. So even though, like, a lot of their stuff was tapped or, or anything, like, that card does go back to the opponent. So, like, you do want to try to get rid of that card there. Um, <laughs> very cool when you consider this, how this is literally the Trojan War. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is a uh, pretty good. Um, yeah, you there are definitely diff different ways to give that creature haste. Certainly. Um, 
but yeah um all right so like as far as a grade goes for the acron war with our grading scale um i think we're kind of like so a b like tor brand was like a b and i think we're kind of this is similar to tor brand but not quite as good so i think we're gonna be going with like a b minus um so let's go with a b minus Oh, caps lock. Let's get that on. Okay. Um, Annex Hardened in the Forge. One red red for a star three. The power is equal to your devotion to red. So, you know, its power at minimum is a two three and can only grow. When Annex or another non-token creature you control dies, you create a one one satyr creature token with this creature can't block. If this creature had power four or greater, create two of those creature or two of those tokens instead. All right, so you're mostly playing a three mana two three, but if you if you have a couple other devotion also out there, <clears throat> and you know maybe this thing's like a four three, then uh, whenever it dies, instead of making instead of being like a two three that you make a one one when it dies, it'd be a four three that whenever it dies you make two one ones. I mean it's fine. It's not it's not not spectacular though for like how good red cards are in standard. I don't think that we're really doing too much there with annex. Um, how do you see the Google Docs doc sheet? You type exclamation point grade. Out oh, there, the directions up at the top. Um, and you know, like those one ones don't get to block, so they're not like super valuable one ones. But you know, you get to just be attacking with them. Um, he protects himself. Well, I mean, it's just. It's just whenever, you know, like whenever he dies, you get you get a couple extra creatures. Um, I don't know. Cre red creatures are are really, really strong. I mean, maybe you have this in like a, a different type of deck, like a green red deck. But even then, like, what are we doing with the, like these extra one ones? Um, yeah, I guess. I guess that's true. If you have like a red aristocrat deck. Um where yeah where you get some get some extra use with the one ones also and you know you like you sacrifice your annex to um uh to something and then you know maybe tr ping with mayhem devil or and then you make two two bodies for like your priest of forgotten gods to sacrifice those decks already have like a whole lot of good three drops though and i'm, I'm not sure that annex really makes the cut in any of these three drops so there's a green red satyr lord that makes some two twos Okay, goes in a Calamity deck? I'm not so sure about that. I think this is kind of, like, I'm not sure this really fits in anywhere. I'm going to give this card, like, a D. I basically think this is, like, an okay card to play in a whole lot of different decks, but not, like, one of the best 60 cards to play in any of those decks. I'm going to go with a D. Arena Trickster, three and a red for a three, three. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Arena Trickster. All right, I'm going to give this just an L for a limited rating for Arena Trickster. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's just going to be just a limited card there. Aspect of Manticore, two red for flash enchant creature. When Aspect of Manticore enters the battlefield, Enchanted Creature gets first strike until end of turn, Enchant Creature gets plus two, plus zero. Um, probably not playing this in standard too much, unless like you really need like the aura stuff, as we talked about. We're just going to be going with an L. But yeah, pretty good limited card. You basically be it's basically limited removal. Uh, turning a you know turning a blocker giving a blocker or attacker either one plus two plus zero first strike but then it just stays on as plus two plus zero like it's very similar to sure strike where sure strike is two mana for that but that's just an instant so the for an extra mana you get the enchantment that stays on and the creature just always has plus two plus zero after that blood aspirant one in a red for a one one whenever you sacrifice a permanent put a plus one plus one counter on blood aspirant and you pay one in a red tap sacrifice a creature or enchantment blood aspirant deals one damage to target creature that creature can't block this turn 
Well, it could be a creature that gets really big if you sacrifice a lot of things. Like if you're playing this with like Woe Strider and you're able to sacrifice extra stuff and you just keep on growing Blood Aspirant. But the problem is if you have a large Blood Aspirant, then you want to be attacking with it. If you're attacking with it, then you're not using the ability on it. And that's kind of awkward. So like if you want to use the ability, then you don't get to attack with it. Um, I'm going to go with just a, another L here, honestly. Not, I think that we just got better things to be doing, um, in in standard than Blood Aspirant. You like this for the Rakdos sacrifice deck? Honestly, I I don't. I mean, I think that two mana is a little much. Um, I guess that creature can't block. Maybe a little bit. All right, not an L. I guess. Okay, we'll go. We'll go with a a D. Never mind. I I guess I could see playing like one of these. Um, against decks with like larger creatures, do you want to try to get your uh, creature through? I'll go with like a D plus. Yeah, it is very good. Cauldron familiar, I suppose, having it grow for free. But I mean, that's still like, I mean, it's basically like a Johnny's Pride mate. And I'll go with like a B D plus. Careless celebrant. One in a red for a 2-1. When Careless Celebrant dies, it deals 2 damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm underrating Blood Aspirant. Maybe I'm underrating that card. Hmm. Let me look at my grading scale again. All right. This could be like Claim the Firstborn level, which Claim the Firstborn is like a C. All right, fine. Y'all y'all are y'all are convincing me. All right, I'll go up to C for Blood Aspirant. Anyway, Careless Celebrant. So yeah, it dies, it deals two damage to something else. Um two mana two one. Um You know, it's not not the not the worst. Um it's not uh not spectacular by any means, but you know, that's, that's probably a, a playable two drop. It's, you know, if you kind of think of it like uh via Shino pyromancer, like via Shino pyromancer was uh two man, two one, when it ETBs, it does two damage to the opponent. This is like the same kind of thing, but it's when it dies, it does two damage. The problem is it doesn't do two damage to the opponent. That's where you really want that damage going. It, it instead has to go to a creature or planeswalker. And that's really where, so not only do you need it to die, but then you also, it doesn't go to the opponent. So I think this is, it's better than just a limited card, but not by much. So we're going to go with the D minus. All right. Dream Shaper Shaman five in a red for a five, four at the beginning of your end step, you may pay two in a red and sacrifice a non-land permanent. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent this way. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest onto the bottom of your library in a random order. Wow. This could be... Um, hmm. This could be some, some jank here. Uh, but you could do some cool stuff. You know, like, so you pay three, you sack, like, a token, like, whatever token that you want, and then you reveal, like, some, like, you know, omniscience. You put, like, some super expensive permanent into play because, it because it, you know, there's no restrictions on what kind of permanent that you can put into play. I don't really know how we're doing it, but that's how you, that's what you could do. You could do something like that. Um, kind of Kind of sweet in, like, a fires deck where you can turn some cards into other cards and, like, use your mana for, and still cast, like, two spells with Fires of Invention. But then use your mana to like sack like stuff and uh, put other things into play. Um, yeah. So yeah, it has to be in like a fires deck. Yep, that's what you'll see. You'll see zero percent play. <laughs> yeah. So we'll kind of figure this out. I feel like we could do something with this with fires of invention. We could build some kind of janky deck. Um, you know, and this can even put like fires into play also, but. Yeah, then you just start putting some things into play. You just start putting like, uh, like that seven mana blue saga into play, an agent of treachery into play, and then you sack your agent of treachery after it was in play. You know, like you 
because you know go go find something else i don't know i feel like we can do something with this um so maybe like a, a c minus like we could build like a pretty janky deck around this but it's not good i don't think like it'd be anything like top tier or anything but could be fun c minus all right, Dream Stalker Manticore. Uh, two and a red for a four-two. Whenever you cast your first spell, um, this, this well, we're gonna go D plus actually with Shaman. Because I'm thinking like if Cauldron Cauldron of Eternity is a D. I mean that's that's basically what we're looking at is like Cauldron of Eternity level with the Shaman. So maybe it should just be a D. It's probably like that same level. Anyway, this is a three mana four-two. During whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn deals one damage to any target yeah we're just going to give this an l i don't think we're playing this three mana four two escape velocity uh red enchant creature enchant creature gets plus one plus zero and has haste and then it has escape so you can pay two and exile two cards from your graveyard and play that from your graveyard as well um i think for the most part we'd rather just have maximize velocity right like maximize velocity isn't that just like a red mana give the creature plus one plus one and, and haste and it's like also an instant in sorcery because it has a lot of bonuses. And then you recast it. So I don't think we really need this card. Or glass slipper. Crystal slipper. I'm not, I'm not sure what that card does. We'll get to that one. I don't know what that card does. Oh, I think that was in a different set. Anyway, I think, yeah, the glass slipper that was in... Some of, that was in the previous set, Throne of Eldraine. <clears throat> but yeah, you can recur that escape velocity over and over and over. Um, and it is an enchantment if enchantment matters. I think we're still just probably giving that thing an L, though. Fateful End, three mana, deal three to any target, scry one. So we're Lightning Strike plus scry one for an extra mana. Well, we're not really playing this in mono red because mono red we're going to be playing the three mana deal four damage because we'd rather deal an extra damage than scry one are we playing this in like you know red plus any other color like red black red green anything like that like maybe um maybe i'll go with like a d this this could you know like like a red black aggro that wants direct damage we can maybe play faithful end it depends on like you know how important like the th specific three number is so like maybe I'll, I'll just go with a d yeah it's a maybe yeah or like an is it deck maybe final flare two and a red instant as an additional cost to cast this enchantment Sorry, to cast the spell, sacrifice a creature or enchantment deals five damage to target creature. Yuck. It only does the damage to a creature, not even a player, and we have to sacrifice something, and it costs three mana? Yuck. L. Heartfire can at least go upstairs. It only costs two. All right, Flummoxed Cy Cyclops. Three and a red, four, four, reach. Whoa. You don't see reach in red creatures that often. Um, whenever two or more creatures your opponents control attack, Flummox Cyclops can't block. That's not so great. All right. L. Fur Furious Rise. Two and a red enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power four or greater, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until you exile another card with Furious Rise. Okay. So you want to have like a creature with power four or greater in play whenever you just play Furious Rise. Then you play this card, and then end step, you exile the top card of your library. And so now... You can play that card basically forever. So even if they destroy your, your creature, even if they destroy your Furious Rise, you could basically get to play that card whenever you want. Um, so it's like, you know, kind of like a draw one right away. Uh, of course, it's a face-up card that your opponent knows about. 
But then you know it has the upside of your next turn if you know if you don't want to play that card or you are you know you cast that card then your next turn you still have your creature power four or greater and you still have furious rise you exile another card and you, now you get to play that second card you don't get to play the first card anymore um so i don't know that's uh yeah so i, I don't know it's that's kind of cool um is that better than other things we have in standard i don't know it being three mana, you know, it's kind of like four mana Chandra where you get a card every single turn. But you get the card at your end step and then you use it, you get to play it like the next turn, basically. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I would assume, I would assume the opponent sees the card. I would assume they do. It's not, it doesn't say exile the top card face down. Usually exile zone is, you know, usually both players get to see the exile zone. Um, I think it would say face down if they didn't get to see it. Um, no, if you don't play the exile card, then you still, it still triggers at end step. And then, then you don't, then you exile a new card, but now you don't get to play your first card anymore. Cause now you play the, the new, the second card, you get to play that until you exile another card. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely pairs really nicely with Bone Crusher Giant and just other green creatures. It's kind of like a gruel card <clears throat> is really what this looks like. So yeah, this, this, yeah, it fits in like a, a gruel deck that, you know, you're playing, um, creatures of power four or greater and, you know, like questing beast, Bone Crusher Giant, that kind of stuff. And you get to, you know, like you're, you think your opponent's going to be playing a sweeper, so you just play this card before they play a sweeper. End step, you exile like the top cards. Then now your next turn, you get to play that next that next card, and everything. Um, yeah, I mean maybe a a Boros deck if you can get some larger creatures like Gideon. Uh, why not fires? I mean, sure, it can work with fires as long as you have large creatures. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's like I think that most of the time, like I think Chandra is going to be better most all the time, but this does cost three mana instead of four, and so that's a big difference. But I think most of the time, just the four mana Chandra is kind of where you want to be. So I think we're kind of at like a C here. I think this is kind of like Outlaws Merriment type level. Um, but maybe a little bit less. I think we'll go like C minus for Furious Rise. Hero of the Games, two in a red, three, two. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Hero of the Games, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. We saw a few of these in white also. We kind of gave them L's, and I think we're going to give this one an L also. Heroes of the Revel, 3, red, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one red Seder creature token with this creature can't block. And whenever you cast a spell that targets Heroes of the Revel, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0. Just don't think we're really playing these cards in standard. Um, but, you know, maybe you can kind of build around them in, in, for a limited deck. But we're going to give that an L for a limited rating also. Impending Doom. Man, that that's a weird picture uh two and a red for an enchantment aura enchant creature enchant creature gets plus three plus three and attacks each combat if able and whenever enchanted creature dies impending doom deals three damage to that creature's controller um yeah i mean it's just another L. we're not really playing this but like the best case you know like you're Best case scenario is like you play this on, you know, like opponents, very small creature, they attack into you, you get to block it and it dies and then it does three damage to them. Or, you know, you play it or you don't care about the three damage on yourself. You put it on your own small creature and make it like a pump spell kind of thing. But, you know, that's not really what we're doing in magic these days. Incendiary Oracle, one in a red for a 2-2. Two, two. You spend one in a red, Incendiary Oracle gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. If a creature dealt damage by Incendiary Oracle would, this turn would die, exile it instead. All right, another D 
decent card for limited, but we're not playing this right now. Infuriate. Um, uh, red instant target creature gets plus three, plus two. This card's already in standard right now. Um, it does there. It is played just a tiny bit in some mono red decks that are like Ember Cleaving with Infuriate and stuff like that. So I'm gonna give it a D. I think you can see like a little bit of standard play. So it's not just an L. Iroa's Blessing, three and a, yeah, give it an R for, yeah, I guess I could do R for reprint, but anyway, I, Iroa's Blessing, three and a red, enchant creature you control, enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and enchant creature gets plus one, plus one. So the, you can basically think of this as removal spell, you know, it's, it's kind of like Lava Coil or, you know, but four damage like that so four damage to a creature or a planeswalker and opponent controls but in order to cast it and it costs three mana um so it's like slaying fire but doesn't deal damage to players but um you also have to have a creature in play and whenever you so you have to be able to target your own creature and your creature has to resolve or like you know it has to resolve so they can't just kill your creature before this resolves and then you also get your creature to have plus one plus one um all of that I'm going to just go, go ahead and give this an L. I don't think we're really playing Iroa's Blessing. All right, Irreverent Revelers. That's kind of a cool cool couple of words back-to-back. -back. Irreverent Revelers. Uh, three and a red for a 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Destroy target artifact, or it gains haste. All right, so yeah, if you want, if you want a, a creature that's being a disenchant... Also, I mean, we'll just just destroy an artifact. So, um, uh, a shatter. So, if you want a creature with shatter, this is a good body. And and you know, you can also just have it be a two two haste. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I like this this one. Yeah, this is a. I think yeah, I like this kind of more than shield breaker because of that. Um, and y'all said I think there's like a, a satyr lord somewhere. Um, so yeah, this is a decent sideboard card. Um, so yeah, a narrow but regularly used sideboard card is a C. I think that's what we're, we're looking at here. It's pretty narrow, but you know it's probably going to be a pretty, uh, a pretty, pretty fine sideboard card. Let's go with a uh, C. Nixborn Brute. Um, eh, I kind of see minus. Artifacts, this set doesn't really have any... Like, artifacts aren't that big in standard besides Witch's Oven. And this set did not really have very good artifacts either. So we'll just go C-. minus. Nyxborn Brute, 5 mana, 7-3. You don't usually see too many 7-3s around. But if you're going to see this one, you'll see it in Limited. Omen of the Forge, 1 in a red, Flash enters the battlefield, deals 2 damage to any target. And you can also pay 2 in a red, sacrifice it to scry 2. So this is basically Bone Crusher Giant. You know, you have Stomp. That's that's your first, the first part. Omen of the Forge is just Stomp. Um, but then, you know, but then it's also a permanent that stays out for Devotion, if that matters. But then instead of paying 2 in a red and you get a 4-3, now you scry 2 which I think a 4-3 with its ability is a lot more valuable. So we're certainly never playing this over Bone Crusher Giant. Um, just would you play this in addition to a Bone Crusher Giant? And yeah, it has a little bit of enchantment interaction. We'll go with like a D here. Um, <laughs> this is not basically Bone Crusher Giant. It's the... Uh, it's the budget version of Bone Crusher. So I'm gonna give that a D for you know just being in just being a, a burn spell kind of card that maybe somebody plays with stuff. If you need like an enchantment burn spell for some reason. O Reed. O Reed of Mountain's Blaze. One in a red for a one three, and you can pay three, discard a card, draw a card. I think this is also an L. I think I'd rather have Merchant, the the red Merchant that does the, that has this exact same ability. That's a two three, that that's the adventure creature from last time. So it's gonna have an L. 
<laughs> yeah, it's the we have a bone crusher giant at home. Yeah, it's it's your bone crusher giant proxy. Oh, Riyadh. That makes more sense. All right, Ox. A mythic. Ox of Agonis. Three red red for a 4-2. When Ox of Agonis enters the battlefield, discard your hand. That's not good. Then draw three cards. Yay, that's good. Um, it also has escape for red red, but then exile eight cards, and it escapes with a plus one, plus one counter. This card's pretty awesome. I think uh, discard your hand, then draw three is really valuable. Um, obviously, if it's the other way around, it wouldn't be so good. Of oh, Draw three, then discard your hand. But yeah, discard your hand, then draw three. You want to play this at the top of your curve. You know, you don't want to have anything in your hand and anything left. Then you play your ox. Then you get to draw three. Even if you have to discard one or even two cards, they at least help fuel your escape. But yeah, if you have like extra cards that aren't really worth it, you know, get this thing in play. Draw three. Now, this is a four two. I, I really wish this was like, you know, I wish it had a bigger toughness, you know, for five mana card. Uh, you know, we, we kind of saw something very similar to this with Bedlam Reveler. Bedlam Reveler was like a 3-4 that also uh, would be able to grow um, and, and be even larger. But a 4-2 is kind of rough, you know, dying to Bone Crusher Giant. Um, but yeah, yep, that's correct. This isn't legendary, so you can kind of keep on playing them. And yeah, the escape, um, bring them back. This is, this is definitely a very good card. Um, drawing three, really, you can't, you can't understand how, like, how good draw three is. So even, uh, and you know, you get, you get it, the draw three attached to a four, two body. So even though you, it has to kind of be your last card in hand. So to, to maximize this card, you really want to play this card with a deck with a lot of one and two mana cards. You want to try to be able to rifle through your hand. You don't want a lot of like threes, fours, fives, like where you, you have like a clunky hand that you can't really clear through your hand very fast. Um, cause you, you want to be able to have good use of your extra cards and get through them quickly um and yeah you could have is it self mill and you mill this thing over um yeah any kind of self mill deck you can mill this over cast it from your graveyard ox is a good one is this better than cavalier of flame depends not with fires of invention cavalier of flames with fires of invention is amazing be able to activate it but without fires of invention um and i mean they kind of go in different decks right like cavalier goes in like your fires deck where you want your higher curve and all that kind of stuff this goes in a deck where you want a lot of cheap spells you want to be able to um, kind of try to trade resources with your opponent early and often a bunch of cheap removal and things like that and uh you know this even works well in like a red black deck like where you have like discard um and then you know like so like you're trading with your opponent with like duress and like the, the new uh agony discard spell um and things like that and you're getting rid of your hand you're getting rid of your opponent's hand and then boom you drop ox whenever both players don't have very many resources you get to refill draw three that's huge um you know discard of course also goes to your graveyard you know so spells that go to your graveyard is nice for the escape thing as well um <clears throat> so yeah so this card this card is definitely really good uh decks you're playing this you're playing all four you don't you know uh it's not great to have two of them in your hand because you play because you can't play the you can't play one without discarding the other kind of thing but it's such a powerful effect that you're playing all four because even if you do um like bedlam reveler whenever you have two of them in your hand you discard one when you play the other and then that other one's just kind of dead this with the ox even if you discard one when you play the other you can then use your other one that's in the graveyard to escape and come on back so that's pretty sweet so yeah i think i'm just going to give this an a i think um i think i think you can just go in in lots of different places like i think this can be a top end of mono red i think yeah it can go in like is it decks like y'all are saying it can go in reanimation stuff you can just you can put the ox a lot of places and it's gonna i think you're just playing a four of with your ox um, I'm gonna, I'm giving the ox an A. I think draw three real good. A. Phoenix of Ash, one red red for a two two flying haste. Pay three. Phoenix of Ash gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. That hits pretty hard. Um, 
And then it also has escape four and exile three cards. And then Phoenix of Ash escapes with a plus one, plus one counter on it. This card is pretty good. This card's pretty good. I mean, two mana, two, two flying haste have been traditionally have been pretty playable in standard. You can even pump this up though. You know, you got like six, it's later in the game. You got, you got your six extra mana, pump it up twice. You're hitting for six. That ends the game very fast. Um, but yeah, even they, you know, they have your two, two, they, they use their bone crusher giant, you know, it gets stomped, let's say, well, then you can still bring it back for four mana as a three, three, um, you know, they kill it again. It only exiles three cards. So that's not very many. So you can kind of keep bringing this back. I like this card. Um, yeah. Flying in haste. Very good. Uh, with escape, like this is, this is another really good card. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to a here, maybe a minus, um, but yeah, this is definitely better than a B. I think we'll, we'll go A minus. This is a solid, very solid red card here. I'm going to go A minus. I think this is the type of card that's going to play really well. Even though like the stats don't, don't look spectacular, but it's going to play very well. Portent of Betrayal. Yeah, yeah, like Phoenix of Ash is definitely a very good mono red card. Definitely. Um, Porn of Betrayal, three and a red for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. Scry one. Just going to give this an L. Uh, you know, so this is Act of Treason plus Scry one for an additional mana. I don't think you really need the Scry one at that part. So, yeah, I think it's a worse Act of Treason. Perforos Bronze Blooded. Four and a red, seven, six, indestructible. As long as your devotion to red is less than five, Perforos isn't a creature. Other creatures you control have haste. Two and a red, you may put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Hmm. So yeah, so Perforos, yeah, so you, you get... Three mana for sneak attack, um, for the sneak attack ap activation, but it only works with red creatures and artifact creatures. Um, and of course, putting in something with with high devotion can help turn on Perforos to be an attacker. Perforos is is definitely a pretty solid card. I mean. I like the, you know, like this, this ability, of course, works really well with the ox. Um, you know, like that's, you know, so you don't have to spend five mana for an ox. You can spend three mana for an ox kind of thing. Uh, I don't think this is really an A though. Five mana is a lot. And while this card's pretty good, it's still a five mana card. It does, um, correct. Perforos doesn't have haste. Um, but yeah, yeah, you put Niv Mizzet Reborn into play. Sure, yep, you can do that. Um, yeah, and a Fires, yeah, Fires of Invention. This card is very good with Fires of Invention and Cavalier of Flame, you know, with that kind of stuff. Um, is this, I mean, is this just better than, like, think about like Jeskai Fires. Is this, is this better than any of the five drops in Jeskai Fires? Dep like it depends on how many Cavalier Flames you can get your hands on, basically. And ox, how many, you know, those and oxes, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, you get to, like, let's say you if you have like six mana, you get to play this and fires in play. You get to play this and something else, and you can activate Perforos twice. Um, you know, you can do that. Um, yeah, you, yes, you, this does not need to be a creature for you to activate its ability. Correct. You still get to just activate this ability. Um, drop white and Kenrith and play, is it fires? I'm more interested in dropping blue and playing Boros fires. If you want to drop a color. I'd rather play Kenrith than Cavalier, but Ox Ox works like really well there with also, you know, like Cavalier, Perforos, Ox, Fires, like 
Ox can be like another cavalier kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, this it's definitely not a bad card, but I mean, it's it's not like going everywhere. Like I don't think this is a this is a like this isn't like a red deck wins card. Like this isn't like a mono red card. <clears throat> um, this is kind of like a, a fire, like a big red fires, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, seven, six is pretty big. Yeah. Grixis fires. You want to play it with, um, yeah, if you can play with Niv-Mizzet reborn, that's definitely awesome. I think, yeah, I think there is a chance for a big red deck with those, with that kind of stuff. Absolutely. It is a 7-6, but it's not going to be a creature all the time. <laughs> but yeah, big big red could definitely be a thing. All right, so what are we going to give this as far as a grade? I kind of feel like it's kind of like Torbran. You know, I think it's kind of similar to Torbran kind of thing. Um, maybe even a little less. Like something like BB-. minus. Because uh, we are still talking about a five mana legendary thing. Like we're not putting like I don't think this is like a four of index unless it's like a really heavy kind of combo deck with this. But I, um, so I think we're looking at like a B. It has a, it has a lot of potential though. Like there's there is a lot of power with just the the you know with obviously with it being a seven six, but then also just the other creatures you control have haste is a really nice. Um, nice thing, but and then obviously this ability. So there, there's there's a lot of power there, which is good. But then there's also a lot of drawback. It's a card that it's doing nothing unless you have other creatures. Like if you know, if, it could just be a five mana nothing. You know, like it's if you're if you don't have other creatures, if they're if they're if you're playing against like a, a control deck that's like using their removal on your other stuff, you could just be stuck with like a perforos or two perforoses in your hand that's doing nothing. Um you know, so that's always a thing. I'm gonna give it a B. Perforos's intervention. Does that even look like Perforos? Yeah, I guess it does. It's like his his beard is like gray here, and his beard is like gold here. But I guess yeah. Anyway, um, I guess he's I guess he's pretty bald on top with like my hair down here. Anyway, all right, X X in a red. Sorcery. Choose one. Create an X1 red elemental creature token with trample and haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, or it deals X damage to target creature or or deals twice X damage to target creature or planeswalker. Alright, so for the first part, um, at two mana you make a one one. At three mana you make a two one. At four mana you make a three one. You know, spending four mana for a three one trample haste sack it, that's not worth a card. Like five mana for a four one trample, like that's not good enough it is an elemental so trigger like resin reef but um as far as a removal spell two mana you're doing two damage at three mana you do four damage to a creature or planeswalker at four mana you know you do uh so twice x so four mana you're doing six damage so it can be used as a removal like kind of expensive you know basically four mana six damage should be kind of killing stuff but it could like red struggles with killing things like cavalier thorn or nissa this can you know kill nissa for four mana in red which sometimes you maybe just need to do that you maybe just need to have this as like a sideboard card against nissa decks because getting rid of nissa in in like especially if you're playing like a bigger red deck where like, you know, if we're talking about, like, a big red deck, like, with these, maybe this is just, like, a cyborg card against Nyssa. Because you, you kind of need a Nyssa killer. What's up, Necrolepsy? Um, sometimes you just kind of need that. <clears throat> but then, yeah, and then, and then, you know, if you're playing your bigger red deck, like, maybe you have a good amount of mana in the late game. Um, and you play this, and you make a large Trample Haste creature. I guess you could pair this with... Um, 
So let's say you play turn four Fires of Invention, right? And then something else. I don't know, whatever whatever else you want to play with Fires of Invention. Um, and then turn five, you play your fifth land. So you have five lands. And then you play that uh, Iron Crag Feet. So you take four mana, you add seven. And you don't spend any mana on that. So then you have seven mana. Plus you get to tap your five mana. So you have 12, so you have 12 mana on turn five. And then you can play this thing and make an 11-1 Trample Haste creature. I don't know. Just saying. Just saying. Things you can do. So yeah, I kind of feel like that's that's like where the spot is for this is in like a, a bigger red deck, even like a Chandra Tribal type deck, something like that, like maybe even just a cyborg card um, to deal, like to just kind of be a Nissa killer kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's kind of worse than a Bane Fire in that respect. Um, but you know, it's, it's also just versatile and it kind of do that kind of thing. Um, so I think we're kind of at like a, I think it's just kind of a, a standard card used as filler for certain decks i think it's kind of like there i think so i think we're at like a c with this thing yeah it is a sorcery i think we're at c maybe c plus i'm gonna give it a c all right satyr's cunning red for a sorcery create a one one red satyr creature token which this creature can't block and then it has escape so you can keep kind of keep on doing that no thank you l limited uh, Scophos Maze Warden, three and a red, three four. Scophos Maze Warden gets plus one, pl plus one minus one. If you want to pay a mana, and whenever another creature becomes the target of an ability of a land you control named Laz Labyrinth of Scophos, you may have Scophos Maze Warden fight that creature. So is that Labyrinth the thing? Is that like the Maze of Ith? I guess. Yeah. Okay. So if you want a Maze of Ith a creature. You get to then fight it. L. Really cool. Yeah, really cool. This is this is this is a really cool card, but this is just gonna be an L. But that's that's a really cool card. Scophos is war leader, four and a red for a four or five. Pay pay a red, sacrifice another creature or enchantment, it gets plus one plus zero and gains menace until end of turn. Also an L. But Cool card. All right, Stampede Rider. Two and a red, two, three, trample. The beginning of each combat, if you control a creature with power four or greater, gets plus one, plus one. Yeah. These are not cards that are going to be good enough for standard. We're giving it an L. All right, Storm Herald. That art looks really cool. Two and a red for a three, two, haste. Ooh. Okay, now we're talking. So we got uh, the three, three, two, haste. Um... You know, that could be we've had we've had some three three mana three two haste recently in standard. Um man, I'm picturing both of them, uh, but I can't think of their names. But anyway, um gosh. Yeah, like there's the there's the Captain Captain Lannery Storm. There we go. Captain Lannery Storm was basically that. And then we also have um the Boros one that's in standard right now. Yeah, Tajik. Alright, so what does this do? When Storm Herald enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. Exile those auras at the beginning of your next end step. If those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. So we have to play a whole bunch of crappy aura cards that we don't even want to play, and they have to be in our graveyard, and then we can put them on our creatures... And then they get exiled at the beginning of the next end step. I don't like that. All right. So basically, basically, that's a whole lot of words about nothing. <laughs> Much a word about nothing. So we got a three mana, three, two haste, which isn't the worst. Which isn't the worst. Um, so yeah, this isn't just an L, three mana, three, two haste. So we'll go... Yeah, we'll go with like a D plus. You never know. Maybe there's like some aura that we want to actually play. Storm's Wrath, two red red. Storm's Wrath deals four damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Awesome. 
Awesome card. Storm's Wrath. Love it. This is an A. Great card. A good Red Wrath. Deals the damage to creatures and Planeswalkers. Um, yeah, just a really good Wrath. So, going to give this one an A. Yeah. Yep, Storm's Wrath. Tectonic Giant. Two red red for a 3-4. Whenever Tectonic... And it's an elemental giant. Two really, really good tribes like to have in standard. And, you know, elemental for Risen Reef. Giant for the giant stuff. For Rome Cloak Giant. Whenever te Tectonic Giant attacks, you do this. Or whenever it becomes the spell of an ability, you do, do this. Either, either time, you get to choose one. Either you have it deal three damage to the opponent. Or you exile the top two cards of your library... Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You get to play that card. So, yeah, you get to, you know, it's a good, good card advantage or dealing damage to them. You know, if they target it, if they don't target it, you're probably attacking with it. Then you get to trigger those. This card is awesome. This card is very, very good. This is certainly one of the best cards in the set. I... Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna give it an A. I mean, I don't, I don't really give out A pluses too much. Like, Oko Questing Beast, like those are A pluses. But this is, this is kind of right there. This is definitely one of the very best cards in the set. Um, yeah, this is definitely an A. Um, the only reason why this isn't an A plus is because of it. It's still, it's still pretty weak to bounce. Um, so like, like three mana to fairy. Like, this card's pretty weak to three mana to fairy. But besides that, like, that's kind of, like, the only reason why this is an A. Um, a plus, I mean. But, yeah. Definitely an A. Oh, yeah. Get a Torbrand out there. Yeah. You either get Lightning Bolt or Light at the Stage. Yeah. You, and you get to choose. You know, it's, it's not like it's not like your opponent chooses. Like, because, I mean, either one of those choices is awesome, but you get to choose. And then, yeah, it, it does die to Wrath Effects. So, yeah, you can play it. It gets, you know, dies to a Sweeper. Um, but, yeah, if you can get this, play this, like, after a Perforos, give it haste. Or have, like, a Risen Reef in play first where you're already getting the value from it also. Yeah, I'm going with an A here. Awesome card. Thrill of Possibility. Um, this is just in standard right now. It sees a little bit of play, not a lot. Uh, where are we grading this thing? Um, probably a, a D plus, C minus. C minus. Yeah, it, it does it does what it does. So yeah, C minus. The Triumph of Annex. Two and a red. And it has four chapters. So the first three chapters are all the same. So we probably want this this chapter to be pretty good. Because this is like what we're doing all the time. So for three mana, chapter one. Until end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus zero. Where X is the number of lore counters on the Triumph of Annex. All right. So the first, so you play it. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero in trample. That's not really worth a card. But the next turn, you give something else. Plus, you can give another creature plus two, plus zero in trample. And then the next turn, you give a creature plus three, plus zero, and trample. And then turn four, target tar creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I mean, I think I don't think this is really going to be much of a card in standard. I think that I'm just going to be giving this a limited rating. Come here. Look at this. You have your lotion up on your head. It's supposed to be on your ear. There you go. That's better. Um, yeah, if you really want uh, trample, so yeah, like red, yeah, regisaur. That's yeah, rotting regisaur. Definitely a really good one we could have. Um, trample with this, um, but now think of it. All right, so like you have your creature in play before you play this triumph. You got the sneezes. Um, and then. And so then you you give your creature trample. You maybe you attack with it. Like, what if they kill your creature? Then your next, then chapter two, you probably don't have like a creature in play anymore for chapter for chapter two. 
Because you just spent your whole turn playing this thing. So, like, your chapter two, you're probably not given anything trample, really. Hopefully, Hawkeye will let me clean up his face a little bit. Let me clean up your face just a little bit. You got a bunch of snot on your face. Nope. He did not. <laughs> um, you got, you got, like, snot and drool on your face. Let me clean that up. Anyway, so like that's like your chapter two. Your chapter three, probably not doing a whole lot. Um, I mean, so then, so then your chapter, so then you play another creature. So then your chapter three, you're giving that creature plus three plus zero and trample, which that's fine. But I mean, all, overall, we're probably like this probably isn't one of the best cards. Like it's this is all like this is okay. And then like you know chapter four, then you get to fight something. But of course, your opponent gets to your opponent gets to plan out like that fight is coming up. Like your opponent's like, okay, I know that they're gonna fight something, so I'm gonna hold up my instant speed removal now for this turn. So now that now that they're gonna do the fight and they're gonna target these things, then I instant speed removal that. Because they get to plan it out many turns in advance. I I just don't feel like this is ever gonna be like one of the best 60 cards for us to put in a deck. So I'm gonna give this an L for limited. All right, Underworld Breach, one in a red enchantment rare. Each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the card's CMC plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. At the beginning of the end step, sacrifice Underworld Breach. Um, man, y'all really like this card. I. All right, so you're going to have to have a lot of mana. And... Uh, then you play this card, and then you can play something from your graveyard. Like, how how are you really, really using this thing? So, yeah, it's it's like Snapcaster, but then it without the 2-1 body. So, like, th like, how do you make this better than Mission Briefing? Like, Mission Briefing... Like, it's... Like, isn't this kind of just worse than Mission Briefing? Unless you ha have to play, like, multiple things. But obviously, you, you can play anything. You can play, like, a, a creature or something. Um, yeah, it has a lot of hype in Eternal formats, sure. But in Standard, the cards cost more. In Standard, you know, like, I'm not so sure about this. Yeah, it gives Escape to Permanence. Um, so, you know, like, you get to you know, snap cast back or, you know, like, you know, play escape, you know, or whatever on like a planeswalker. Sure. Um, I don't know that. Uh, I mean, you say Monterey can throw down a ton of one drops once they run out of steam. Like, can you? Like one, are there really that many good playable one drops in standard? And let's say, let's say you have five mana and you want to play three one drops in red. So you get to play this because you have to have five mana. So you play this and then play three one drops. Okay, so that means you have to have nine other cards besides the three one drops in your graveyard. Are you, are is your red deck going to have nine cards? Like how are you play, like playing three cards with this? How are you having that many cards in your graveyard? Are you having you know? So that's twelve total cards in your graveyard. Um, and then all you did was you got three one mana cards at that point. Are those cards like even like that really like that impactful? They had to like wait all this turn and wait for your wait till you had twelve cards in your graveyard for your underworld breach. Um, I'm not I'm not seeing this. I'm not seeing this. Yes, yeah, so, sure. Yeah, you just play shock, shock, shock. So okay, yeah, sure. But, I mean, you still have to have nine other cards in your graveyard. I don't, I don't see it. Could have worked well with Secret Keeper. Uh, I don't know, I guess, if you want to self-mill. Yeah, maybe in, in Storm it's busted. I mean, yeah, but we're talking standard. Like, I don't, I don't really see how this is being played in standard. Like... Yeah. I mean, Thousand Year Storm. Yeah, I guess we'll give it... I guess I'll go with a D. Where, let's see, what are... Ds are like cards that you'll rarely see in Standard. Like, that's kind of this card. I think. 
yeah, could definitely be some whole new deck. Something's like built around it. Um, could end up being a highly played card. Um, yeah, you'd be able to use Spectacle, but I'm I'm very skeptical on this card for standard. Very skeptical. Underworld Fires, one in a red at sorcery, like because like people were really freaking out over mission briefing. If if you were paying it, if you were, you know the, like everybody was talking like mission briefing was like an expensive card. Whenever it previewed, everybody was like, oh, it's Snapcaster, um, but you get to surveil also. Everybody really liked mission briefing. And I feel like this is just this is very similar to mission briefing. Like like mission briefing is not played in standard. I think this is very similar. Cast Iron Crag feet twice. Doesn't Iron Crag Feet say you, you can't play and you only get one more spell and that's it? Oh, you can't. Oh, yeah, you can't use Spectacle because the escape cost is the card CMC, so you have to use the, the card CMC. So, yeah, never mind. You don't get to. Um, Underworld Fires in the this card in the Racto Spirit deck. Let's see. Ooh. Uh, one in red sorcery, it deals one damage to each creature and each planeswalker. If your permanent dealt damage this way, it would die this turn, exile it instead. Ooh, okay, so that's pretty interesting. So yeah, with with uh, Pestilent Spirit, giving this thing Death Touch, it's just a sweeper for all the creatures. Planeswalkers aren't affected by Death Touch, of course. Um, but yeah, sideboard against a cat deck, yep. Um, it's definitely a really good card against like Elspeth. If Elspeth is big, definitely a good card there. Mm. There's a good amount of Planeswalkers that just like minus and have one loyalty. But yeah, this could be a, a decent cyborg card with Exile because yeah, Cauldron, you know, Exile, Cauldron, Familiar. Um, but then also does other stuff. But yeah, with Rakdos or with uh, Pestilent Spirit, that's really where you love with Pestilent Spirit. Of course, it does. It would kill the Pestilent Spirit. It would just be. You know, Wrath of God, basically. It exile everything. Oh, yeah. It's very good with Torbrand. Yep. Because, I mean, it's just two mana. You can't really expect it to be amazing for two mana. But, yeah. It's good. It's a good thing to play after combat, too. Like, after opponent, like, makes some blocks where they keep some creatures. You know, like, you attack in with a couple 3-3s. Three they block with a couple 4-4s. Four uh, they think their creatures are going to survive post-combat. Then you Underworld Fires and they exile them. I don't know. That, that kind of thing could happen. So yeah, let's kind of give this like a C. Fringe standard card used as filler for certain decks. Narrow, but regularly used sideboard card. Yeah, C. Underworld Rage Hound. One in a red, three one. Attacks each combat if, if able, and it escapes with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, yeah, this is just an L. It is an elemental. That is true. It's an L elemental. But yeah, I think we're just giving this an L. <laughs> and then you yeah, keep trying to scroll my browser here. And then Rapid Flames. This is, of course, another reprint. Uh, three in a red sorcery deals one damage each up to three target creatures. Those creatures can't block. Um, no, you wouldn't really play Underworld Rage Hound in Team Elementals. Um... I think we're just giving this one another L. This can be playable though, but I think there's I think there's better things in standard. Like I think there's a, a card in standard that like a Cosmotronic Wave. That's the card. I think that's a card in standard that does one damage to all the creatures your opponents control and they can't block. So I don't think there's really too many reasons to play this. Um instead, like all right, so there we go. Uh, wrap in Flames will wrap up our red review. Let's let's look at our top five cards in red. We had three A's and an A minus. So our three A's were uh, Tectonic Giant, Storm's Wrath, and um, Ox of Agonus. So those three, those would be our top three. I think I'm going to go Tectonic Giant number one. Storm's Wrath number two, Ox number three, and then we had one A, the Phoenix, so that would be number, or one A minus, sorry, the Phoenix was an A minus, so that's number four, Phoenix of Ash, and then uh, 
Perforos was our, our next rated card at B. So Perforos is our number five card with this, uh, <clears throat> I guess that a crow in war is number six, but okay. So that'll be our, our top five, our top five cards in red. I think tectonic giant. I like a lot. Um, so there we go. The worst color in the set. No, 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 no. I think red, red looks better than white or blue for just, just looking at it. I mean, you get storms, wrath and tectonic giant. These two cards are just incredible. And the Phoenix is very good. And the ox is very, very good too. Doesn't look as good as black, but I I kind of like just from what we we've done so far, um, and obviously I, I could be missing something, but just off memory from what we've looked at so far, I would say I'd rank them so far: black, red, white, blue. All right, there we go. So there's red. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, leave those comments. Uh, what cards am I overrating, underrating? You know what I miss, all that kind of stuff. What what cards are you really excited to play? What cards do, are you really excited for me to brew around? What what cards do you want me to play? You know, day one, um, all that kind of stuff. Leave those comments. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you so much for watching part four here. We're going to be back with green. So hope to hope you all check that out also. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you for the next color.